to make that two orders. Hi, Dal. Have a good trip? No, it was long and tiring. Well, don't come apart of the scene yet. Oh, not another job. Mm -hmm. Well, count us oh. out. We're bushed. Sister Bridget called. Sister Bridget? What'd she want? It's not Christmas yet. No, she didn't want you to play Santa Claus this time. What is it? Trouble at the orphanage? She wouldn't say. What did she say? She wants you to meet her three miles east of the orphanage on Viewcrest Road in about 45 minutes. She sounded serious. Funny, I'm not half as tired as I was. Neither am I. Come on, let's go. See you, honey. over the orphanage. Yeah, we'll see her anytime now. It's a beautiful country out here. Well, it's great for the kids. They get a lot of fresh air, you know. And the only place to raise kids is in the country. Is that right, Doc? Hi, sister. Well, what, what seems to be the trouble? I'm afraid I'm breaking the rules, Charles. You? Breaking rules? Yes. You see, I shouldn't be here. I thought it was strange you being out here alone. That's what I mean. But the situation was such I, I just had to... Bend the rules a little, huh? Yes. But if we can finish this, this little mission on time, I'm, I'm sure everything will be all right. However, I must be back in time for Vesper. Well, how can we help you? If we could be on our way, I, I could tell you as we go. Come on. I always had more affection for Andrew than the others. Oh, he was such a pitiful youngster. After so many years of seeing other children adopted and his staying behind, well, we, we grew rather close. And then, just a few months ago, he had a chance to go into a foster home. What's the matter? Is he unhappy there? That's right. Oh, it's... It's very difficult for a boy of 17 to adjust to a new life. So you want to try to straighten things out at uh, the Dunlops? Yes. They're really very good people. Mr. Dunlop's a bit strict. Andy! Where are you? Andy, there's chores to be done. Now, come on, boy. I can't do all the work myself. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Dunlop. I guess I... You was daydreaming, that's what. How many times I gotta tell you? Time's money, especially on a farm. Oh, money, huh? Listen, ever since I've been here, that's all you've talked about is money. Well, I tell you, I'm getting sick of it. Don't get smart with me, young fella. You've been in that orphanage place all your life. Now you're getting a taste of what it is to work for your keep. There'll be no more charity handouts for you. You'll learn how important money is. How much farther is it to the farm? Well, let's say we're over Fowler's Corners. According to what you told us, we should be there in about 15 minutes. Then I'll be back in plenty of time to lead the children in their evening prayers. They'll never know you've left. I suppose not. But I'll have to tell Mother Superior. She'll understand. I hope so. It's not as though Mr. Dunlop were irreligious. He can take us, but in small doses. If that's so, why was Andy allowed to live with him? Oh, Mrs. Dunlop's a very devout woman. I'm sure you won't object to your coming to see Andy. 
Oh, I'm not concerned of how he feels toward me. It's the boy. Carl, how could you talk to the boy like that? <laughs> it was mighty darned easy. That youngster's a lazy no-good. He's not like other children. Raised in that orphanage, you need time to adjust. You're right. He ain't like other kids. Kids around here work, and hard at that. right in the front yard. Oh, I was going to try for the front porch. I don't mind the walk, P.T. Just now told me you was coming. Carl. It don't make no difference. I'm still going to call the sheriff. Carl, I've always been an obedient wife, but if you do, I'm leaving you, and that's a promise. But he stole my truck. He didn't. He bought it from you. Well, he still owes me $27 on it. We have a very serious thing facing us. Andrew, he's gone. Please, won't you come in the house? How could a boy who's been taught goodness like Andrew has? Where did I fail him? He failed himself. All these years, what did I do wrong? No child could have been given more love. My whole life's work. Sister, everything you taught him was good. Forgive me, but I believe in him. My gun's gone. He took my gun from the dresser. Maybe I pushed Andy a bit more than I should have. All he's talking about money. What if he's going to get it? <laughs> I'll go look for him. Fine, but where do you start? Well, let's see. If a boy wanted to lose himself, where would he go? Los Angeles? Right. A big city. There's no better place to hide. And the county road's a long ways from the main highway leading into town. We'd have time to spot him from the air. It's certainly worth the try. How about it, sister? You fly and I'll pray. Come on. It's a green pickup truck. Right, thank you. dead if anybody ever ordered something besides coffee. You wouldn't believe this, but all week I've only taken in 50 bucks. 50 bucks?
head is for Los Angeles. Well, we have a 50-50 chance of being right. Once he gets to that main highway, we'll never find him in the traffic. Mrs. Dunlop said he'd only been gone about 45 minutes or so. If he's down there, we'll find him. I need some water, I guess. Sure thing. Up here, sister. Besides, we don't know what it looks like. Hey, something must be wrong. He's waving at us. Yeah, he's trying to signal us. Better get down and see, Chuck. been hurt. Looks like somebody robbed him and hit him on the head. He looks bad. He might be a dime. The radio and call the police. Andy didn't waste much time, did he? Now, wait a minute. We're not sure it was Andy. Well, whoever it was ripped out the phone so nobody could call the police. See if you can find something to cover him up, please. I'll be right back. Is there anything we can do to help? Well, we don't dare move him, Sister Bridget. Chuck will have an ambulance here soon. What a hurt side. He's just an old man. You can see the empty cash register. What could they get? Ten? Fifteen dollars at the most. To a lot of people, money means everything. Hi, this is Helicopter 3A Bravo calling Greendale Radio. Helicopter 3A Bravo calling Greendale Radio. Come in, please. This is Greendale Radio. Come in, 38 Bravo. Uh, Greendale Radio, this is Chuck Martin of Whirlybird. Would you notify the sheriff there's been a robbery at Boykin's Auto Service on Highway 17? The owner's pretty badly hurt, over. We'll notify the sheriff and send ambulance right away. We'd bring him in by helicopter, but we're afraid to move him, over. Okay, Martin. Over and out. Three Bravo out. And this is my truck. Now, this'll be fine. They're sending an ambulance right out. Mac, would you mind waiting till they get here? Sure. You didn't tell him about... Sister, I told him the facts. An old man was beaten and robbed. we better get going. We've lost a lot of time. Tell the police I'll be checking with them. Dark thoughts 
sister? Thanks for stopping. My car broke down. Oh. Where are you headed? Los Angeles. Going to visit my aunt. Oh, that's the way I'm going. I guess you might as well hop in. I'll be glad to pay you. Oh, you don't have to... Gee, that's an awful lot of money. Yeah, uh, my folks gave it to me for my visit. Uh, there's a roadside stand up away. If you'll wait, I'll go in and call my folks. They'll come down and pick up my car. Now, let's go. Thanks. Few miles from the main highway now. Looks like we're not going to find him in time. There's still those few miles. Sister, doesn't it seem strange to you? I mean, Mr. Dunlop's one remark about money. It shouldn't have set Andy off like this. I'm afraid it wasn't just one remark. Mrs. Dunlop's called me before. This has been coming for a long time. Sure too bad you didn't try to see Andy before this. Well, I thought at first it would be good for him to cope with a problem by himself. I guess he has pushed too far. Car three calling sheriff station, come in. Sheriff station, go ahead. On that robbery at Nixon's store, the owner says it was two boys, about 17 or 18. Uh, he's pretty confused. Uh, says they got about $35. No better description? Not of the boys. Uh, he did get a quick look at a pickup truck as they drove away. Uh, a green pickup truck, 49 or 50. Uh, he couldn't see the license plates. Truck heading west on State Highway 18. Maybe the same ones who killed the old man at the garage. Yeah. This is Greendale Radio. Calling helicopter 38 Bravo. Calling helicopter 38 Bravo. Helicopter 38 Bravo. Go ahead, Greendale. This is an emergency. How far are you from State Highway 18? We're flying parallel to it right now. There's been a robbery about a mile and a half from the intersection of the main highway. Two boys robbed a store and slugged the owner. Could be the same ones who killed the old man in the garage. Killed? Could you intercept? Over. We'll try, Greendale. A pickup truck. I know. I'll report back. Three at Bravo out.
get ahead of them so I can turn them off under their side roof. Right. this boy back up the road. Andrew, Andrew. Sister Bridget, what are you doing here? Andrew, how could you? Ma'am, I mean sister, if what he's telling us is true, he's in the clear. sure didn't look like a thief. He didn't look like a murderer either, but he did kill the old man at the garage. He must have done that after I left. It's all over now, Andrew. Only one thing left. What's that? To get Sister Bridget back to the orphanage before... What was that you called it? Vespers. Prayers of thanks. 